Kirk Johnson, I'm president of the BMW Motorrad Club in Northern Illinois. And in today's do-it-yourself video, I'm going to show you how to install all new brake lines. Spiegler brake lines for, the, for uh, this video. This customer's bike here. Um, I had it in here for a, uh, you know, just an annual service. And I told the owner prior to even starting on the bike, I said, look, the brake lines are getting pretty old on this bike, and uh, they're, they're really old, and they need to be changed out. He kind of opted not to change them until I s stepped on the rear brake and uh, it popped the line. So, thankfully that happened in my shop and not out on the road somewhere where it could have been a real real disaster. But uh, I called up uh, Spiegler, got myself a, or him, got him a uh, set of uh, brake lines there, you can see them there on the, what they are, um, I bought them directly from Spiegler, you can get them from dealers, uh, maybe save a couple bucks, but anyway, uh, this video is going to show how to how to change these out, and I'll, I'll show you pretty much why you need to change these out. down here this is where it broke you can see the uh, line is really shot there's a big hole in it right there it's uh, it's pretty much all leaked out and not cool shot brake fluid all over my shop too when it blew so if you haven't tested out your brakes recently uh, you, you really should grab onto them while they're you're not moving and uh, you know really bind down on them and make sure that they don't uh, blow if they're if they're the old lines. It's good to test these things out while you're not moving. So let's get at it here. Um, pretty much what it's going to involve is removing and replacing all of the brake lines. So uh, this bike, you can see here now. I, I in one of my other videos, I replaced the the shocks and springs on this bike to lower it down and part of the issues that it causes here you can see you can probably see this in the video it's like even though this brace is in the way it really puts a big strain on this stuff see how this is pretty severely bent here you got a pretty good bend going on right here uh, this one is pretty much normal that's that's not nothing new but it really, uh, you know, puts a lot of stress and strain on some of these parts that are not normally bent. And this one would probably go before too long. Um, so anyway, got to pull off the brake lines up in here. There's a uh, there's a fitting up in here. This job is really not that hard. It's really not that complicated. It just really just takes some time. And then you have to be very careful to properly bleed out the brakes, bleed out the ABS unit again. Make sure you don't have any air in the system. Um, you know, before you get going again. Uh, this one, this bike is a 1999, and you know it doesn't have the uh, the servo motor and the brakes. Even if it did, it, it really wouldn't matter that much. It's uh, it's it's really kind of the same procedure. So anyway, we'll get after it here. So what do you get in the kit? As for the rear caliper, it's nice that they uh, actually label all of your your parts. It already has all the, the little rubber uh, fittings on there, so you can line them up correctly with the clips. This one here is oh, there we go. The rear master cylinder. That's the one I'm looking for because this is the one that blew out on the bike. Right caliper. master cylinder this is the first one so this is going to go up in the uh, uh, underneath the hand grip or under not underneath the hand grip but underneath the, uh, the cover that's on the handlebar that one's kind of a pain and here's one going to the ABS unit Now we 
have the left caliper, a little shorty here. You also have a, uh, a few little uh, tools in here and all the, all new washers, all the new uh, crush washers that you'll need to put on. You have this uh, little bridge piece here to go on your on your front brakes. And then you've got these little plastic pieces with the with a, a tool here, just a piece of uh, plastic that you can run inside of these and actually turn them and adjust them correctly. So, anyway. You can get them in all different colors. I just this is uh, their stock color, which is just silver on uh, and gray. Anyway, it comes with instructions on the back here. Of course, it comes with their catalog, and probably the most important thing is a couple of stickers. So, getting started here, what can we know about doing anything with the brakes, especially removing brake lines? It's going to get messy. So. I got my uh, my bucket here, just kind of hooked it into the rotor. Hopefully it'll catch some of it, um, as it as it just starts to drip out. Have plenty of uh, paper towels on hand to hopefully catch up some of that other stuff. So once I pull this line off, I'll be able to kind of direct it and let it just drain out. I'm gonna just let the whole the, the system just kind of drain out. From this point here because if I start up top it's going to leak all over the bike it's going to be a big mess so there we go anyway so this part here is just for this one make sure it's loose that's a 10 millimeter and wrench I should be able to do this without uh, taking the fender off hopefully I can Now you're gonna be you're gonna be reusing your uh, uh, your banjo bolts, but you're not gonna reuse the washers. So let's take this off. Just hope it doesn't. Uh, I can't remember. It's been a while since I don't have done one of these. I don't remember if I took the the caliper off to do this job or not. But anyways. So here's my banjo bolt. Just set that aside for now. There we go, dripping right in there. So it has the washer on there. I think they're little copper washers on these right here. But we're going to change those out right away to the new one. They're a lot thicker. Don't forget to change those as you go along. It's still dripping out, but I'm going to just go ahead and clip these uh, these zip ties that are holding on the ABS line, the ABS sensor line. Have to redo those later. All right, well that's still dripping down there. I'm going to go ahead and take off my covers here for my handlebar so I can get the uh, uh, the line on top done. So this one right here is going to have to get removed, which means you're going to have to rotate this thing on the bar to get at it because obviously you're not going to be able to uh, get it like this. Kind of forgot about that one. And then it just gets routed down through here. You can see it here. 
just kind of gets routed down. You don't have to remove any more than this. But we'll have to rotate this bar so that uh, have to make all this stuff loose so we can get at this one right here. So I don't have any regrets later. I'm going to cover up the important plastic here. off the grip here. So once you get this part loosened away, underneath here there's going to be a little hex right there. And that's going to allow you to rotate the assembly over so you can get at this, uh, this bolt here, this banjo bolt. So I'm just going to leave it like that for now. Good time to inspect your, uh, your cables, all that kind of stuff, to make sure everything looks pretty cool. Like our brakes are about done, they're about done dripping. So back down there we go. I'm going to take and loosen this one up here with a 11 millimeter. That'll go into the other end of this thing. I'll take that off. Ten millimeter. So this whole part right in here is just one unit, so that's why they give you this new one that you've got to piece it together. So I'm going to go ahead and run this in. Just make everything just finger tight. I'm going to have to get it cross threaded. There we go. I'm not going to tighten anything up yet. Put this on here. Pretty much put this one into place. I'll go on like that. So, got my new washer on this side. sandwiched on there like that. Start threading that in. So we're just tightening this just till it stops. Not doing any torque yet. Okay, good. back on here. This one. There we go. This one back in. Next we gotta take off this line here up there.
I'm not going to show how to get that off. You know how to undo a bolt by now. Now it does have a, a clip right around here. You can see it in the video there, I think. There's a little clip right there. Uh, I, can't, I think there's a way to undo that clip. But if not, I'm just going to cut it out and then I'll, I'll zip tie it in. In fact, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Cut it out of there. I'm going to zip tie it back in. Now you may be tempted to keep that pile of junk around for uh, all of eternity in case your one of your friends breaks a line, but you know if he breaks a line, I think you better just get him a new set of uh, Spieglers. It's probably a good idea if you want to uh, pull off this air horn. There's a kind of a tough to get to hex washer and uh, hex head and washer right up underneath here but then you can pull off this air horn it should just separate off of here back up here at the top once you get this uh, this little hex nut loosened up you'll be able to start to rotate this thing around and you're going to have to pull the uh, the brake line out of its holder that's attached there it's kind of welded on there a little clip unclip or any uh, zip ties that are in your way Cut any of those, and you should be able to rotate it. Yes, you will be able to rotate that now, so we can get it at this connection here, and then be able to feed this thing down or pull it back up, whichever one. So I'm going to go ahead and unbolt this one here, this connection now. So in order to get this one off, 14 millimeter on this second one here, and it will start coming apart. You can probably get your hand up in there. With that air horn removed, it really helps a lot. Okay. There it is. Now you should be able to pull that up through the uh, underside and just pull that thing out of there and then snake the, the new one in there. Gotta get it in there. Awkward. So this new one is 11 millimeters. It's going to kind of temporarily put it into place. There we go. Now this one here is going to have to get rotated. There is no way this is going to meet up with that. So this is it. There we go. Just grab onto it, spin it around.
Okay, so now this is the first one. I'm going to just go ahead and torque this one down because I want to be able to put this thing back in place so it goes, you know, back down here. Everything fits in nice. And I can, you know, put this down where it belongs before I torque that other side down. So I think they get torqued down to uh, 18 newton meters. Okay. back to where it used to be. You can see the lines there. We'll put all this stuff back on later on. Fix my wire, my uh, routing here a little bit. Make sure it goes down in there good. Looks good. Make sure that your uh, your throttle cables and everything are free. Check your operation. Make sure everything's okay. So this uh, fitting up here, I'm just going to make this good and tight. go. I know it's not coming out of there. Look up the other fitting. Don't forget to put on your new washers. So remember these usually just they back in like you're going to tighten in so they can't turn. They back into these little uh, tabs that are on here. Same thing again 18 millimeters or 18 newton meters excuse me not millimeters. Now you're probably not going to have this big bend in yours. You're not going to have this huge curve going on in yours because, uh, you know, yours probably isn't a lowered bike. I don't know. It's going to be a strange situation going out for a ride on this thing. I just hope that this guy doesn't ever uh, go over any speed bumps. Otherwise he's going to be likely to wreck. I think when I measured it, it's it's about three inches to the lowest uh, point on the bike. That is not very high. I'd be afraid to go over hills. If you own an LT, you already know how bad they scrape as it is.
Okay, now I'm going to just go ahead and tighten up everything here. Uh, tighten up all these points and then uh, at the caliper as well on this side. So don't be afraid to uh, pull the calipers off if you need to in order to get a better bite on this thing. Sometimes it's uh, like on mine, it was pushing against the tire, kind of making it off angle. I couldn't really get a good torque reading on there. So pull the caliper off and then just use, basically just set it out in front, stick a screwdriver in there, and then be able to torque it down. If I have to do it on the other side, I'll show it to you how to do that. Okay, so this is all torqued down, that's tor That's there, that's done. Now we just have to uh, hook these, you know, uh, tidy up this stuff here. This is all hooked up, this is hooked up. I just gotta tidy these things up. This is all hooked up, that's hooked up. And then we'll put our air horn back in there. I'm gonna make sure everything's done first. I'm gonna, you know, when I bleed all this out, I'm going to make sure that this is uh, that nothing is leaking here uh, in case I need to tighten anything down. I'll leave that air horn out of the way for now. So now I'm going to go over to the other side of the bike and take care of that side. Over here on the left side of the bike, I'm going to change out that one. So it's not going to be uh, really too too hard. It's pretty straightforward. So I'm going to try to do this. I may wind up pulling the caliper off like I did on the other side. Um, probably not going to have a whole lot of brake fluid leaking out of this one because it's already drained down off of the other side. Maybe just a little residual stuff coming out. millimeter. There we go. I'm going to have to cut the zip tie here because it's holding on to the, uh, the ABS sensor wire. There it is. In the pile. Sneak the new one up, run this thing in there. There we go, we got it started anyway. Get your two uh, washers. I think you're kind of getting the gist of this thing by now. Something I wanted to note of here, when you when you torque these down, you're going to feel like you're going to strip it out. Um, as long as your torque wrench is good quality and adjusted properly, you're not going to strip it out. But it, what's happening is these, uh, these crush washers really are crushing. They're getting very small, so 
under that amount of uh, pressure. Don't worry about it. Don't, don't think that you're going to break something. Even I start thinking I'm going to break something because it, it's like, wow, is it really going that far? Yeah, it really is. So go ahead and try to torque that side down. If your torque wrench fits in there, great. If not, then uh, definitely just take it off and move it off to the side. Like I may have to do here. I, don't, I just don't know if this is going to work or not. No, I don't like the way that feels. So I'm going to pull these off. Here's what I do, I just take a screwdriver and run it through this way, and then I can use this to torque it against it. Okay. I just gotta fix that one. Good. Just put a zip tie back on here. Once we zip tie everything up, make sure we're, we're just gonna make sure that you know when I bleed this thing down now, everything's gonna be good. It's uh, you know not gonna be leaking or anything somewhere. And then we'll put everything back where it belongs on the front side here. Then I'll get to the other side, the back side of this. So when you're going about bleeding out your brakes, uh, when you fill this thing up the first time, you want to sit there and flick, flick the uh, the lever just a little bit, just just give it a little bit of flicking. And what it's going to do is it's going to start bubbling up here. You're going to see bubbles coming up, bubbles. Just keep doing that until the bubbles stop, and then start you know pumping while while the brakes are open. And uh, I was going to get all the air out of this system. It's going to get all the air out of the out of the lines, and then just do a regular brake bleed on this thing. So you want to bleed it, you know, at the calipers, and certainly bleed it down at the ABS as well. well I haven't done the ABS part yet, but I'm I'm getting to it. Um, so make sure you bleed out your uh, make sure you bleed out the ABS as well, and uh, God willing, it should be all good to go after that. For the rear master cylinder, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start here. It really doesn't matter if you start at the caliper end or you start here. Both parts have to be changed. You're going to introduce air into the system, and it's all going to leak out. So no matter what you do, just start at it at some point. So you want to see. Now, this is the biggest reason that I'm changing this, because this is broken right here. You can see a nice, uh, nice break in this. There it is. Oh yeah, there we go. Really see that. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut. I'm just going to cut this hose right off and uh, start clipping away. At got a little zip tie right here that holds on your uh, brake light sensor. So if I roll this around, let's see what we're working with here. You got the fill hose coming in. This goes over to your reservoir, and then you've got the uh, brake line itself hooked up to this master cylinder. Now, as when I when, I, when I'm done here, I'm going to straighten all this out because this this looks like it's off to me. 
yeah, yeah it's, it's, something's not right here. Anyway, you just have to unhook these and unhook this. You unhook this part here by unclipping that. Give it a pry, something to pry against. There we go. And then you just pull this pin out. Okay. And then this is the uh, push the push rod. Just set that aside. Now I get this unhooked. I'm just going to go ahead and, and cut this brake line up here. It's not going to matter a lick here. In fact, it'll just leak out into my pan. I'm changing this sucker out. Uh, the biggest, the, the most, I guess, probably the most important thing is, is that you just get the routing correct when you put on your new hose. So now you got this new hose here, it's going to go like that, and then that part's going to go up inside there. So we're going to unhook, I'm going to unhook this master cylinder now from the foot peg. These are uh, put in there, I think, with some Loctite, or a little bit of resistance come out. Those are your washers. They put those little paint marks on just to, uh, when they double check stuff before. Just saying, uh, hey, I checked that. side. So I got that thing up out of the way. Anyway, I'm just going to use the screwdriver here to kind of hold this against it. It's 14 millimeter, yeah. Well, so just kind of note again the angle that it's at so you can put it back uh, hopefully in the right spot done. Washers. Crappy parts. Get the new part here. And thread it back together. So if you get uh, confused, like, you know, how critical is the angle, stuff like that, what you can kind of do is just kind of hold it into the, roughly into the position that it's going to be sitting, which is this. And then this is going to go, you know, up behind here, up behind this, this brace part. So just kind of positioning it in a way that it's not going to run into anything. Go like that. There we go. thing about uh, when you put on these lowering pegs, just a little side note here, this guy's got the uh, uh, suburban machinery pegs on there that lower it down and you want to adjust your your, your foot because look, your foot's down here, brake pedal's way up here, that, that can cause a kind of a dangerous situation, you know, you want to have that thing in a position basically that you're going to a little bit closer so that you're not, uh, you know, going to cause an accident, that could actually cause you to lose time between your back brake 
I know, I know that most of your braking happens on your front, but still you should be able to at least access your, uh, your back brake. So you can adjust it here, and then down here, you know, you want to adjust it when you use this piece here. You want to adjust this so that you're getting the full amount of travel inside of the master cylinder. Because what happens if you don't do that, I've seen this before on bikes, if you don't get your master cylinder adjusted correctly, the piston that's inside here, guys that just go and crank that thing down, they just keep cranking that thing down um, <clears throat> so that the, the piston inside here keeps moving up and up. And, you know, it's you, you can compensate at the brake at the caliper by just releasing some of the pressure out. But what happens is it gets up past this fill part right here, and basically your brakes never refill. So when you go to flush your brakes out, you're like, well, what's, what's the deal? Everything's stuck. It's because the fill part is passed. So you want to get up past that and, uh, you know, be able to utilize the whole thing. You know, so like here, it's, it's just touching. Well, you're probably going to have to adjust this thing down like this in order for it to actually remain down at the bottom. plunger that's in there. Just a little side note. Okay, that's out of the way. Now, next part. Right up in here. Okay, so to get this one out here, it's welded. This, uh, the whole fitting here is actually welded to a plate that's, uh, I think it's maybe part of your battery box, I don't know. But you can grab onto this thing get a hold on it so you can get to it and you should be able to then pull that sucker out of there <clears throat> oh. I'm gonna pull this one out this way because I can so there we go that little uh, make sure that little washer is gone. Probably falls off anyway down inside there somewhere. Getting this one lined up is definitely the hard part. Okay, there's you'll be able to see this on your bike, but there's a little tab that sticks out on this bracket and that and the fitting needs to go over the top of that so it's going to point out. Actually when it twists back into place it's going to be pointing kind of at an angle like that. It's pointing down towards the bike. Sort of like that. Right now it's kind of like this until I torque it down and re-bend that piece back over. So I'm going to go ahead and torque this one now. There it goes back back into place. There it is. It's all bent back right where it's supposed to be. Good to go. All right. So now I am going to reposition this thing down here. I'm going to reposition this. So that it lays flat like like that. Okay. Got this where it's supposed to be now. Put some lock tight on these things. Tighten them in. I'm sure there's a torque setting for them. Just don't know what it is at the moment. It's probably like Feels like 10. Okay. Hey, look at that. It's going to work just great. Adjust it down just a little bit more. I'm going to adjust it just so it has just a little bit of pressure 
on the plunger and about like that just so there's enough just enough pressure on that thing so it's going to continue to operate and not uh, oops Good. Yep. Okay. Good. It's all there. Snap that back into place. Tighten that down with a 10 millimeter. Okay. And then we're going to zip tie it right up here. Zip tie this up to this right here. And then when we put it back in, it should be all there. So getting at the last one, the rear caliper, that's where you start. There's a rear caliper one. It's got the uh, two rubber grommets on it, so you can hook it in properly to your final drive. Here's the connector right here. Just a matter of pulling this one off. You gotta clip all these. There's quite a few of these zip ties on here that are holding on these wires. Um, if you follow it up and around, you'll see it. I know you're gonna have more room than I do on your bike because your bike isn't lowered. those rubber grommets and those will just pop right out of there they're just little clips so you got one there one there and then there's your last connection right there this is probably the easiest one to do on the whole bike that's why I saved it for last so once again it doesn't really matter which end you start on you can start at the top end or you can start at the caliper end doesn't matter. Just clip these uh, zip ties out of the way. Make sure you don't cut your wire. I think you know that by now though. Just be careful what you're doing. clips here you paying attention yeah these clips you just push them down like this and just lift that thing right out of there okay yeah that's yeah, all right you're not helping <laughs> lay down she's not much of a helper
Make sure you get this on the right side of the, uh, the tab so that it tightens against it, like I just did. There we go. That looks better. You might have to adjust this a little bit so you can see it's not really lining up correctly here. So, looks like you can just on this one I can just grab it. It also comes with that tool that you can insert inside there and, and turn it around, but sometimes you just grab them and they're fine. There we go. It looks like it'll all line up just right. These can slide along here if they don't line up perfect. Like that. Good. More new washer. in there. Good, not hitting the tire. Now we just have to zip tie, make sure you zip tie these things up really good, These all these wires, so it doesn't come in contact with uh, either your brake rotor or your tire. Obviously that's gonna cause problems. Again, just go ahead and after you're done with this, bleed out your brakes according to uh, you know your normal procedures. Don't forget to bleed that uh, uh, the ABS unit. Uh, that's gonna be super important on this job because there's no doubt about there's a ton of air in the system right now there it is everything's torqued down so now I'm just going to bleed out my brakes after I tie everything back down and then get out there and test it out before I put all my covers back on too I want to make sure there's no leaks or anything before uh, you know that way if there's a leak I don't want to have to take that stupid uh, those stupid sides off again so anyway that is going to conclude this video thank you so much for watching uh, check out our other videos whether they're on YouTube or at uh, IllinoisBMWRiders.com and if you'd like to make any kind of a contribution to our club please do so we can always use the funds um, also I'll take contributions myself so, uh, anyway, thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And definitely, this is a job to do on these bikes because they are uh, certainly getting older. So, take care.